Well, in 1776, as the United States was celebrating the declaration of its independence in Senegal, a boat ride from Dakar, a slave house was being built that to today remains one of the most painful reminders of Africa's dark past. The African Media Initiative recently sponsored a, grip to the island, a trip to the island. This is Gore Island. Every year, thousands of tourists of all races visit what was once the holding place for millions of mostly West Africans who had been captured and brought here before being shipped off to the Americas, Europe or the Caribbean as slaves. Slavery in Africa ended years ago, but the stories are harrowing even today. And she heard a woman catch his men. But slave said, I go to Sepeden. The men go to Louisiana, United States, the mother in Cuba, on the child Haiti. So slave trade broke thousands and thousands of families, you know. Papi Soab was born here and has been a tour guide for 25 years. Every tourist who come in Senegal, he visit Gore by force. And one black man tell me, if you come to Senegal and don't visit Gore, it's a big genocide. This is the second time here for American-born Meredith Beal, who now lives in Kenya. It just reminds me of what we've been through and how many people we've lost and appreciating the fact that we, somebody survived so that I could be here. You know, it makes me angry again, but, you know, we need to remember. Okay, I tell you that 20 million left, 60 million died. You have to respect this place, you know. Gore is a protected place, declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in the late 1970s. The houses where the slaves were held for up to three months, cramped into small rooms of up to 30 men, women and children separately before shipment, are original and still intact. The minimum weight for a man to be sold was 60 kilograms. If you don't have 60 kilo, they put in the cell, they give you food to make you fat like pig. The price of a man who has 60 kilo or more 60 kilo is a gun. The price of a woman is about wine. Treatment of slaves by their captors, explains Saab, was inhuman. For punishment, if they were not shot and or thrown to the sharks, they were forced to sit in a small space like this one for 15 minutes. Many of the tourists, like Zimbabwe's Basildon Peta and Dura Gambo of Sudan, both journalists, were on their first visit to Gore Island. Yeah, I, I'm totally gutted. I don't think this is an attraction I would ever want to visit again. It opens deep old wounds and it's not nice. They never treat those people as human beings for a moment. It's, it's, it's dark, dark history. Out of all the slavery experiences at Gore Island narrated by Papi Sob, none drew more emotion than this one. We call this the last door of the door with a return. When you go to the door, they buy by Africa. You never seen Africa again. You have two ways. The first one, take the boat from America. The second way, eaten by the shark. You go, you never come back. Dele Olojede is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist from Nigeria, where many of the slaves came from. Yeah, just, it's hard to explain. I don't, I'm usually considered a very articulate person, but I don't have um, the words to express. Ugandan journalist Charles Onyango Obo. There was that intellectual knowledge and, uh, you know, the activist side of me was, uh, was able to relate to that story, but this is, it's, it's different when you see it. It's different. Ugandan professor Kelo Ochuli, who now lives and works in Nigeria, says everyone must make a visit to the island. Gore as a historical document is very important and ought to be vigorously encouraged, not just as a tourist center, but as a, an educational center. What is obviously important is that people ought to be reminded about this legacy of uh, Western civilization. Joining us now to talk more about Gore Island is Dr. Suleiman Yang, a professor in the African Studies Department at Howard University here in Washington. Dr. Yang, it's so good to have you on the show today. First of all, what is your reaction to the reactions that uh, you heard on the tape? Thank you very much for coming to this uh, broadcast. The reaction I get from these colleagues, some of them I know, I'm familiar with them, are very disturbing because what they are revealing is the sense of total 
disagreement with what happened. We are reflecting on the past and the manner in which the past affected the relationship between the Africans and the West. Now, the Middle Passage. Dr. Nyang, what I also got a, a big chunk of it was that for a lot of people, this is not their story. They still see it as maybe a story of the descendants of slavery, maybe something very detached, like say if you were from East or Southern uh, of Africa, you're not really as, that wasn't as much yeah, of your history. No, no, I think you are quite correct. This is the historical amnesia of the African intellectuals and the African people because you see, the Middle Passage story resonates more in the Americas among the descendants of the slaves. And somehow, the Africans on the continent suffer from historical amnesia in the sense that in their own societies, they don't have memories about that transaction. You see, that is something which parallels what happened with the Hebrew people. <laughs> because you see, since the Romans destroy Rome, I mean, uh, Jerusalem, and destroy the whole temple for the Jews. Mm -hmm. For 1,888 years, they were cut off from their past. We were in, they were living in Europe or in Asia. Now, Dr. Nyang, just to bring the conversation back here, so how do you recapture that essence? Uh, as uh, Professor Uchuli here mentioned, that more people need to come to really understand what's going on there. Well, actually, I know Okello, you know, I know him in, in Nigeria. He is one of these very... Uh, profound and very conscious African intellectuals I know. Because he is trying to connect East Africa and West Africa, and he wants to connect the Africans from the continent and the people in the diaspora. And this is very important in light of the fact that President Obama has a second term. And this is a time for the Africans to do some self-healing, to really, what has happened, his re-election, in my opinion, has made it categorically clear to the Africans, get your act together. The people who were responsible for the slave trade have matured to the point that they are solving their own internal problems. It is high time for the Africans to go back and connect the dots so that and they can have their memories together. And also keeping in mind that Africans were complicit in the slave trade. In fact, even talking to Papi Sab, his great, great, great father, great father participated in the selling of slaves. So there was some internalism going on there too. No, this is very true because you see in Senegal, that door of no return is part of Senegalese society that whole Senegambian region. Or you can talk about greater Senegambia and smaller Senegambia. You see greater Senegambia include Mali, Mauritania, Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, and Guinea, Conakry, all of their stories are connected together. And slaves from Nigeria, from Congo, all the way from Angola were all processed by the Portuguese and then the French and the English. So that is our story. We have to own up to this story. The reconciliation among the white Americans must also take place among the Africans. I am very happy they organized that event to take these journalists. Okole, Okole, I know him. I think he was more forthright and more honest than many of the others who are so shocked, they're stunned. They don't want to own up to that story. Because most have heard about it but not seen it, and that really changed perspective. But thank you so much, Dr. Nyang. Thank you As very always. much. Always a pleasure. Yes, indeed. Dr. Nyang, Dr. Suleiman Nyang, a professor in the African Studies Department at Howard University, joining us here on In Focus. <laughs>